and you're dealing with internet pornography. Well, I don't know if you could do that for me, God. But you could do that for Susie Smith over there. But I don't think you can do that for me. I don't think so, God. We talk so negative to ourselves. We believe for everyone else and have a really great faith. And we pray for people. And people get out of wheelchairs. But we're just stuck in our own spiritual wheelchair because we don't have faith in ourselves. We look too negative to ourselves is what the problem is. And then we portray that as Chris was saying, or co-host was saying, to other people. So when we're negative towards ourselves because we don't like ourselves, we portray that to somebody else as well. And that's the thing. We have that kind of power. We have all the power that Jesus had and some. Like we said, the Bible says that we will do greater things than God himself. So we need to have that kind of power. We need to stand in that belief, but we don't. And that's the thing. We don't believe that because we don't stand firm in our belief with that. But with that being said, what we're going to do is on the rumble, which we got into another. We always do, don't we not? We get into all kinds of topics before the even, even before the message starts. We have, sometimes we have three <laughs> messages on the show. Don't get me wrong. I love it. And I love doing it that way if that's the way God wants us to do it. But we have, some days have three messages on one show. And it's just, uh-huh. it's just amazing how God does what he does. But with that being said, guys, what we're going to do is we'll pray for you. If you got a prayer request, go to community call 222 at gmail.com or send us a voicemail at 1302-448-8443. Again, that's 1302-448-TGIF and put in the subject line on the voicemail, prayer request. I need to turn back on my, uh, I got the phone number active, but I haven't logged into my, uh, my, uh, I'm not going to go to anything on the computer just yet, but my Google Voice number that we got for Spreak for the podcast. I need to log in and see if anybody messaged me. It's funny though because I get a, a, a phone call once in a while from somebody and it keeps going to voicemail because I don't answer my phone calls right away. And it says, yes, uh, Daniel so and so, we're here with your, uh, your records for your, your doctoral records and blah, blah, blah. And we want to, uh, talk to you about getting you back to work and, I'm like, I call him back up like, uh, you just called me again. I'm not that person. I don't, uh, I'm at work right now. I don't have any issues wrong with my legs. Sorry, but can you stop calling me? <laughs> one day, one day I'm gonna, one day they're gonna do that. I'm gonna pick up the phone. Hello, this is TGIF. You're on the air. How can I help you? <laughs> just, <laughs> just do it. Just like that and watch me hang up. But, uh, we're gonna pray for you. We'll pray for the governor. We're gonna pray for the, President, whoever that may be at the time, I'm not going to talk down about our presidents because you know it's what God wants, and I'm not going to. I'm not. Don't get me wrong; he's not. Don't get me wrong; our president, I'm not a fan of, but it's okay. I'm a fan of Jesus, and if Jesus put him there in office, I'm a fan of him in that aspect. Other than that, I will not say I'm a fan of the president, but I won't talk bad about him. I'll just only speak the truth. In the truth only. One good thing I can say about the new president is uh, he's trying to help us financially. Trying. That I can say. Yes. I like to talk negative. But I love who he got in the president right, as president right now only because God has him there for a reason. There's always a reason why God has somebody. Don't get me wrong. I thought Donald Trump was great and fabulous. But... Just because I do doesn't mean I have to be all down and no, oh, well, God, this and no. I'm not going to leave. My, my pastor once said, and he said this when Donald Trump was in office because a lot of people talked down about him. He says, you leave that man alone. God has him in this office for a reason. You don't say anything. You leave your hands off of him. And I'm going to say the same thing about Joe Biden. I may not like the guy, but leave your hands off of him. God has him in office for a reason. There is a reason why... God has him there. Leave him alone. Don't talk about him. Don't talk bad about him. Don't lay your hands on him. Devil, you back off him in Jesus' name. I may not like the guy, but I will rebuke you and pray that God does what God does to change his heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Because we need to pray more about these things. And I lack that a lot. Because I forget to pray for our government. The Bible says to specifically it says the to devil, pray for your government. The devil keeps us busy, you know, with our own affairs. <laughs> oh, and junk. Let me ask you a question. How many times when you had a car did you have to run out for errands? 
I had a car that I had to run out for errands. I said, I said, how many times when you used to drive in a car that you had to run out of the house for errands? Oh, all the time. That is our last track. <laughs> you are always, I have to run to the supermarket to go get bread for my sandwiches for tomorrow's lunch. I have to go run to here to get vegetables. I have to run to here to do this. I have to go to Microsoft to get a wire for my car. Have to, and by the time you get done, and it's nighttime, you're already home. You're like, wait a minute. I did nothing for God today. I ran so many errands, I forgot about God. And that's the thing. The devil distracts you a lot with junk. And then when you get home, you don't feel like doing absolutely anything but watching TV because you just want to relax now because you've been out walking around all day. So it even, even numbs your mind up a little bit watching TV. TV. We, should do, we should do a message on the devil's distractions one day. That would be kind of cool. That would actually be a cool message. Because if we get rid of distractions and a lot of it's sin, oh, then we're oh, open. No. Then we have free. Then we have more free hands to do for God. Let me ask you a question: Is is going to the supermarket a sin? No. Is going to micro center to do something for the show, buying something, is that a sin? No. But if you're distracted by every one of those things, even though they're not sin, if you're distracted by them and you forget to read the word and you go home and you watch TV because you're so tired and you just want to sleep, is that sin? It's neglect of God. And when you're neglecting God, you're disobeying God, so you're being disobedient to begin with. So those individual things are not sin. Going to the supermarket and buying vegetables is not a sin. But while you're doing that, Put on your car radio the Word of God and listen to it. You don't have to read the Word to get the Word. The Bible actually doesn't say knowledge comes from reading and reading the Word of God. No, it does, no the Bible doesn't. The Bible but doesn't say knowledge comes from hearing and reading the Word of God. No, it says knowledge comes from hearing and hearing the Word of God. So, I mean, it, it says study and show yourself approved, but it also says knowledge comes from hearing, hearing the Word of God. So, play the Bible on CD or tape or on MP3 in your car while you're driving. Let God show you stuff, because there's some stuff that you can listen. I got, I got a complete New Testament Bible on 45 record albums played in Speed 16. And that's it's it's one of my favorite things that I own. But even just that, God can show you stuff through that. You don't physically have to crack open the spine of your Bible to read it. Don't get me wrong, you should. It's always good to to dust off the Word and read it. Because even reading it sometimes brings more out. But when you're out and about, listen to the Word. Listen to some worship music, but listen to the Word. Get the Word in you. And that way, when you're at home, you're not going to say, I'm too tired, I don't want to do nothing now. You could say, I'm tired, and I actually did for God today. I studied his word. Even though you didn't physically open the book to read it, God still showed you some stuff while you were doing everything else. So the devil might have wanted to distract you, but you weren't distracted because you were putting and putting God first in every aspect of your way because you were listening to the word. So, But those things itself is not a sin. The sin is the fact that once you're distracted and don't want to do nothing else, and then you neglect God, which is disobedience, that's the sin. When you spend all this time, every day doing all this stuff, that may not be sin, but doing all this stuff, and then doing nothing for God, that's the sin. Because my buddy said, as much time as you give to God doing this, this, and this, whether it's, even though it's not wrong, give that much time to God and more. So, think about that. While you're doing what you're doing, let God be in that situation. How do you know that by letting God in that situation, you're not going to run into somebody in the supermarket who just happens to stumble across you and say, I recognize your voice. You're that guy on that, that, that podcast I listen to. Or, you know, <laughs> you, you never know what you... I run into people, I ran... And here's a funny quick thing, too. I, I'm in Michigan, and Chris would know this, everywhere I go, I'm known as Magic Man. That's my name, Magic Man in Michigan. I used to be known as Magic Man. And I would go to Coney Island, and I'd sit there with the guys and have coffee at night, and they go, you're Magic Man, aren't you? Show me a card trick. 
I'd show them something new, and they go, wow, how'd you do that? And everywhere I go, they go, that's the magic man. He knows card tricks. He knows magic. He can, he can float and this and that. And when, <laughs> some kids, I told them, was, it was and a lie, but forgive me, Lord, for lying, but magicians lie all the time, because when they say, you used an invisible string to do that, no, I didn't. You don't want to give up your secret, so you tell them, no, you didn't. It was, and then you concoct a story to tell them what it was, and then they even know it's not. Now they're still fooled. Because the next day, each time you show it to them, they're going to say, okay, I know you did. You did with that, oh yeah? Then you check it. Hey, wait, but that's not there anymore. What happened? I got a new secret now. So you make them forget about the one they just got you on. And the, but magicians make up stories all the time. And I told him, I said, yeah, my uncle's David Copperfield. I'm going to have lunch with him tomorrow. Three months later, they came back. That guy's uncle's David Copperfield. <laughs> no, he's not, but I totally forgot I even told it to them. But um, where I'm going with this, at? oh, yeah, I was known as Magic Man in Michigan all the time. And... Uh, I went back one time, and it's like, you'll never know what will happen, because you might run to somebody, you'll never know what will happen. I ran to somebody at Coney Island at one time, at that time, and they go, they go, I know you. So I reached down for my bag, and I was fishing through my bag for a deck of cards. He says, I know you. I said, you do? And I'm fishing for a deck of cards. And I, in my mind, that keeps on asking to do a card trick. You're the guy that does that Christian podcast. It's an absolute. Put my bag down. Like I don't need to show you one of these. <laughs> that is a laugh track. <laughs> but you, like I said, you'll never know what happens. Someone will run into you, so they know you from somewhere, or they see you on something, or they might just say, "Hey, you're the guy that does the podcast to listen to." I could tell by the voice. How you been? So you'll never know what, what will happen. But when you're in God on a constant basis, you'll never know what happens. I'd be in God and I'd be doing something like me and my buddy Steve would be in God and talking about God. And the next thing you know, there, a car would be broke down on the side of the road or a parking lot would say, hey, can we help you out? Do you need some help? Well, we got, we got, a, I got a tow truck coming. And we said like, well, can we at least try to give you a jump? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. We'll give him a jump and the car starts up. He goes, man, I'm canceling that tow truck. Here's 20 bucks. That doesn't mean the fact that we got money for us, but we did it for, but it's just when you're in God, you'll never know what will happen. God can start you. Because if you're not in God, and my co-host will agree with this, if you're not focused in God, how can God use you if you're distracted? How can you be sensitive to the Spirit if you're distracted? Am I not right? Yes, totally. You can't be sensitive to the Spirit if you're distracted. It's just like that's why it's the devil's job to distract us. Absolutely, and it's just get like, us, get us in sin, and get us in worse sin, and worse and worse. It's like there's times when I wouldn't realize this, but my wife would be in total worship, and she she'd be in total worship, and I'll say, "Well, what do you think about the podcast?" This wait a minute, I was just in worship. You distracted me. And that will ruin that song for her because now that she can't get back into that mode she was in to begin with in that specific song. So she has to change a new song to do something else. And it's just the way it is. When you're distracted, you can't be used by God because you're distracted. You're not focused on the Spirit. You can't be in the Spirit and in the world at the same time. You can't be distracted here but be here with God at the exact same time. It just doesn't mesh. It's like... Being in the world and being in God are like oil and water. You know the story, don't you? Oil and water never mix. That's right. You put oil and water float to the top. No matter how many times you spin that oil in that glass or you shake that glass, that oil will sink around and do what's everything. But when it gets time to be done, that oil will float right to the top. Right to the top. And if you want, if you want, if you want to do something cool, I'll give you guys a little science experiment you can teach the kids to do. So what you need to do, because pepper and soap don't mix either. If you don't know this, pepper and soap don't mix either. So what you got to do is go and get you either pencil or you can go get you a magic wand and get some clear dish soap and dip your magic wand in clear dish soap or your pencil. And then bring the kids over and tell them to do a magic trick. So you take a 
bowl full of water and you pour salt all pepper all in the uh the